In my application, I'm missing the latest JSS releases. With JSS 21.6, the context ID was introduced. Axum Cloud Forms can now be added to pages. JSS 22.1 improved the Axum Cloud pages load time significantly. Also, the developer experience connecting my local app to test UI changes in Axum Cloud pages got simplified a lot. I'm excited about these features and I want to update my codebase to the latest JSS version. In this video, I'll guide you through the steps and explore some of the new features that have been added. It's time to update our solution to use the latest JSS version so we benefit from all the great new features. In episode 7 of this tutorial series, I guided you through the process already, so I'll skip some of the broader explanations this time. Feel free to watch back the previous video. I did that as well in preparation of this video. However, the process is pretty much the same. I download a fresh foundation head. In there, I rename the SXA starter app to company to simplify the comparison later on. Next, we compare the vanilla starter kit with my solution using, for example, WinMerge. Before I make the changes, I check out a new branch on my solution. I apply the changes, run an npm install, this time I also need to change the .env.local file, but we come to that later. Then build my company Next.js app. I run the app locally to test it and then later on test the Docker setup. So let's get into it. First, I'm checking what JSS version I'm on. Therefore, I navigate into my app folder and open the package.json file. I'm on 21.5.2. Checking the changelog on the JSS repository in GitHub, there are several update documents explaining all about the files that have been changed and what bug fixes and improvements have been shipped with that release. In the JSS documentation, there is an upgrade guide going from 21.5 to 21.6, one from 21.6 to 21.7, one from 21.7 to 22.0, and one from 22.0 22.1. We're not doing the upgrades as described here from one version to another, but right to the latest version, which is 22.1.3. Now I directly check out a new branch, so all my changes get tracked under this branch. To download the vanilla foundation head, I browse to the site Collapse GitHub account and search for the XM Cloud Foundation head repository. Once the repo is downloaded, I rename the app from SXA Starter to Company. This will make the comparison easier at the end. In WinMerge, I can see now all the differences. Not all of them are relevant. Therefore, it is good to check the documentation again. It's usually good to focus on the root directory and the source folder. When comparing the files, you will recognize that some differences are based on your customizations. Be careful to add all new files that are located in the vanilla foundation head, especially when they are in a new folder. Those are not displayed at first in WinMerge. Also take an eye on files and folders that do not exist anymore in the vanilla head. Make sure to not delete your customizations. The package log.json has a lot of differences. Luckily, this is regenerated after changing the package.json and running an npm install to install all new package versions. One of the changes introduced with JSS 21.6 is the availability of the context ID environment parameter. This simplifies the configuration of rendering hosts, but also local setups, as the context ID consolidates some of the other parameters, such as the ones required for CDP. Also in the future, using the context ID will simplify your life even more. A great improvement for the developer experience. To utilize the environment parameters required in XM Cloud, I navigate to the XM Cloud Deploy app and locate the project and environment. On the Developer Settings tab, I can see the required environment variables exposed. Here I choose between connecting to the preview and live or edge endpoint and I can see that within the JSS 21.6 release and following, we only require three environment variables, the context ID, Sidecore site name, which used to be the JSS app name, and the JSS editing secret. Compared to what was required before, that is much easier as explained earlier. We can copy those 
and paste them into the .env.local file. This whole file merge process took me approximately 30 minutes, but obviously that can differ. Let's check if the app is functioning. I can run an npm run build. Seems that was successful. If it fails for you, read the error message carefully. It could be that you forgot to migrate some changes or files or kept a file that has to be removed. There could be also errors in accessing new files. Ideally, you create them within VS Code or WinMerge. When starting the app now locally running npm run start connected, we can call the website on localhost port 3000. Perfect. Let's also test the local Docker setup. I navigate back to the root of my solution. Make sure you have the IIS stopped on your machine and the reference license file is valid. First, I run the init script passing the path to my license file as well as the admin password. Next, I run the upscript. This usually takes some time downloading all the Docker images. Now that everything is tested, I can commit the branch and push it to the repository. Once I create the pull request and merge it to the main branch, the build and deployment pipeline of XM Cloud Deploy takes care of delivering my changes to XM Cloud. Now I can explore the new features. We talked about the context ID environment variable that has been introduced with JSS version 21.6 already. This simplifies the developer experience now and in the future. The JSS release 21.6 also enables the XM Cloud form support to help you build contact and more sophisticated forms. I've created a form already. When I drag and drop it onto the screen, I see an error that states that I cannot add it to this placeholder. This is because forms requires a dedicated component as a basis. In Content Editor, I need to add the so-called BYOC wrapper to the available renderings. I can find that under Layout, Renderings, Foundation, Headless Experience Accelerator, Frontend as a Service, and here it is. Let's save the changes. Back in Pages, I actually don't have to use the wrapper explicitly. It just got activated. Now, when adding the contact form, the error is gone. And my contact form appears. Don't forget to serialize the changes into your repository so it is always deployed consistently to other environments too. But not only Forms is supported with that activation, also the Bring Your Own Component feature of the Component Builder got activated. Another great improvement is the page speed optimization done in XM Cloud Pages. Content loads much faster now. All components are inline editable as usual. Experience Editor, of course, still works, but does not benefit from that improvement. I can also now change the configured rendering host to our local running rendering host to see pages using my local changes. This way, I can test already my local changes in pages without using Docker instance and setting up an ngrok tunnel. And sure, there are a lot of other improvements too. Summarizing, the JSS release 21.6 enabled a simplified configuration introducing the context ID, XM Cloud Forms integration and the Bring Your Own Component feature of the Component Builder. Furthermore, with the JSS release 22.1, the speed of the XM Cloud Pages editor improved a lot and we can now connect to our local rendering host very easy. Please note, the Foundation Head repository is currently being reworked and released in the upcoming weeks. So if you are planning to upgrade, it makes sense to take a look at these improvements. I'll update my solution once the changes are there. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss further content from our Discover SiteQuiz channel. Leave a comment if you have questions or any remarks. See you next time.